Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel and today I'm talking about upgrading your Stage Pro Element to a Stage Pro Anthem. On my channel recently I've been reviewing this guitar, it's a great guitar. I have to say normally when I get an Element or an Undersaddle pickup in the acoustic guitar, like a wood guitar, I always change it. I will say on these guitars they tend to pick up a lot of body sound and this Stage Pro Element does sound pretty good. Before you do the upgrade, there's a few things about this guitar that I've come to realize in preparing to make this video, and this applies to all under saddle pickup installations as well. It's very important to make sure that your string balance is even. So what you might want to do is get some headphones and play through the strings and check that they're all even, especially the high E. So let me do that on this guitar right now to show you what I mean. Basically, what happened before was this E was a bit quiet. Now, not quiet enough to be a real problem. And actually, when you install the Anthem, the mic in the Anthem takes care of that E most of the time for most of the frequencies anyway. So you might not even worry about this. But I felt from, from auditioning this pickup for a while with just the undersaddle that this was a little bit weak, but I mean a little bit like just not quite upfront enough for me in both of my Rain songs. And I think I figured out why. There's a couple of things to bear in mind here before you get started with the upgrade. First of all, does that sound balanced to you? And you can record it, you can listen back. The high E will always be a little bit different sounding to say playing the E here on the B string. Because on the B string, if you play the E, you've got a thicker string, even though it's the same pitch, right? They're never gonna sound exactly the same because this is a thicker string, but they should sound in the same ballpark. It shouldn't sound like one is a step back from the other. I, I use that analogy, I don't know why, but something just wasn't quite right. It was bugging me a little bit. And I realize now it has on my other guitar as well, my other Rain song. I think I figured out what the problem was. First of all, and this has happened to me on several acoustic guitars of different brands, make sure your saddle is completely flat. So that's the saddle here, right? What you would do is you would carefully remove this Put it against a flat edge like a metal ruler and hold it up to the light. If you can see light bleeding through the a gap, that means it's not flat. You need to then get a piece of sandpaper. By the way, all the tools today will be linked below in the description, but you want to sand that down to be completely flat. Bearing in mind, when you do sand it down, it will be lower and your action will be lower. So you might then want to buy a replacement saddle and start again. But it's very important that that bottom of that saddle is completely flat, so all the strings are the same volume with an undersaddle pickup. And that goes for any undersaddle pickup. So that's the first thing. So mine was flat, so that was fine. So then I played again and I thought, hang on, this doesn't sound right. So I pulled out the Martin guitar that has the same system. And that E on that guitar sounds really punchy. I thought to myself, well, hang on, what's going on? Is it the guitar? But no, I think I figured it out. The saddle length of the Martin is slightly wider. I think it's like three mil. Okay, first of all, in the, in the manual for this, the Anthem installation, they tell you to drill the hole through the saddle to, to put the pickup through an angle. Neither brand do that, and I don't think it really matters. They also tell you though, if you've got a shorter saddle, to drill an extension hole at the end, so the tip of the under saddle pickup, the element, can be, can be uh, fed into that. Because the tip, the very end of the under saddle pickup here, is not active. There's no sound. Martin don't drill that hole and everything is fine. So that's, that's great. And everything sounds balanced and it's fine. On here, you need that hole. I don't see it as a problem to add the hole because you've already got the hole here for the pickup controls anyway. But I will say this, this is my experiment. And if you're going to do this, it might void your warranty. So do this at your own risk. And also, if you do any drilling, be extremely careful or have a professional do it, okay? Just for um, reference, what I did was I got this drill bit. Again, I'll put the description in the description below. I think it could have been a little bit wider. So I drilled twice to make the hole slightly wider so the pickup would fit through it. And I made that hole right at the end to extend the saddle slot. And I fed, I pulled the pickup through a bit more and fed it through into that. So all I've got here now is pickup wire. I haven't got that little bit at the end which is basically where they cut it off and they solder it to make the end of the pickup, and that's not active. There's also a black dot there. That black dot should face up, okay? Again, this is all in the instruction manual, so re please refer to that. That is a big thing with this guitar. Now I have a much better balance on both guitars, both Rain songs, 
they're much more balanced in the strings. I'm really happy. And to prove that, I've also got a waveform that I can show you on the screen. In the first waveform, I'm playing a fretted note and then the same octave on the high E, so it sounds like this. I'm playing them both as loud as I can. And in the first waveform, you can see that the second, every other note, which is that high E string, is very anemic, very thin. And then after the modification, check this out, it's a completely different story. It's so much richer and fuller. And to me, that's really important. So I'm really happy. In fact, I've, I've got to say, one reason I'm including that in this video is I now much prefer the guitar. And I'm so glad I did that. But again, please use caution, do it at your own risk. I put some towels on top of the guitar. Okay, remove the strings, remove the saddle. I pulled the pickup back through the hole, put some towels, carefully drilled that hole, and then fed the pickup into the hole, the end of it into the hole, and then put it back again. And that, that was the result. I did have to play with it a little bit on this guitar, make sure it was fed through just right and everything was seeded well. And I did some recording to, to check it, and it just sounds great. So that's the first part of this video. Make sure your current installation is optimal. And the second part of the video is going to be, do you, do you want to upgrade? Is this really an upgrade for you? I need to include this because there's a few things about the Anthem that are not available that you get in the element here. So in the element pickup, and I'll, I'll put a picture on the screen, it's easier. But basically, you get a mid control. So that means you can change your mid frequencies like this. So you're going to lose that because that becomes the mic blend control. That doesn't bother me because I have mid controls on my soundboard and my pedals. And also you can do something like you can boost the bass and, and treble and that effectively cuts the mid. Or you can reduce the bass and treble that effect effectively boosts the mid. But, you know, that's a trade-off. It'd be nice to not lose that control. That doesn't bother me, but you need to be aware of this. Also, you're going to lose about six to eight decibels of output level because you're adding another gain stage, basically, or mix stage for the microphone from the Anthem version. In all my years of using the Anthems, it's never been a problem, all right? I just boost the gain on the mixer or the pedal, or whatever I'm using. There's been one amp I've ever used that was a problem. I, well, not a problem, it still worked, but it would have benefited from a bit more gain from the pickup, and it'd be a good idea to use an external pre like preamp with that. But that's just one amp in, you know, a lot, not, not, I wouldn't say hundreds, but a lot of different situations. So that doesn't bother me. Again, I want that mic blend. I want that mic to be taking care of those high notes because on here, sounds very good, but it will sound even more natural when the mic is handling those frequencies. You might lose a little bit of battery life, but the battery life on these pickups is incredible. It'll last you months and months. And the battery is so easy to replace anyway, it's right in the top of the guitar. So there's, for me, the, the pluses of that mic sound far outweigh any negatives, but there are some things to bear in mind. Also, you've got to buy the Stage Pro Anthem, which is gonna cost you money. Now you can always sell this one on because you can put this in that box and sell it, sell it on as a full system, but you do have to pay for that new system. So bear that in mind as well. Having said that, onto part three, let's do this. Let's replace this with the Anthem version. So what do we need to do? Well, first of all, get your new pickup, of course. So here it is, you need to buy this. This is the Stage Pro Anthem. Again, everything's gonna be linked below. The good news and the bad news is that we're gonna reuse a lot of the stuff in the guitar already. We're not gonna touch the end pin. That's gonna be the same. We're not gonna touch the under saddle pickup. That's the same. Uh, the wire clips are the same. All we're gonna do is unscrew the four screws here, remove this preamp, and the controls and put in the new one, reconnect the wires and add the microphone. It's really simple. Before you get started, do take some pictures of the current install through the sound hole because you'll notice inside that the cables are twisted around each other. You want those cables to be twisted together and hooked in the guitar. You don't wanna hear any rattling when you shake the guitar. Also, the way this pickup works, it is all active. The whole braided pickup part is active. So that needs to be locked down. You don't want to be moving around. You're going to get a lot of noise, a lot of hand handling noise. So bear that in mind. And the tools you'll need, a capo. I like G7th capos. A string winder is useful. 
I love the Music Nomad stuff. And a screwdriver. I've got this husky one here. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is put the capo on the first fret and just tighten it up so we get some pitch here. Why do I do this? I do this because now I can loosen all the strings and basically let's make the string completely dead, slack. The strings won't fall off the head of the guitar, you see? If you didn't have the capo on there, your strings might fall off. So that's why we do this. It means that we can remove the pegs and take the string out and then reuse the strings again. We haven't got to put brand new strings on. So I'm just loosening all the strings, take all the tension off. I'm giving them like, I don't know, 10 turns or something, 15 maybe. And then what you should be able to do, you should now have all the strings loose and the capo on there. You should now be able to remove the pins and take the string out like this. Just want to push the string in, pull the peg out, and then carefully put that string down there, and then put your pin safely on the table. I like to keep them in the order I take them out. You don't need to, but that's what I like to do. So again, just push the string in, pull the pin out. Excuse all the fingerprints on the guitar. It's inevitable with a glossy guitar. So let me do that, get all these out of here. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen the four screws on the top here and remove this control on the top here. The whole thing is going to fall through, so do have your hand underneath it to catch it, okay? So you want a crosshead screwdriver and loosen those four screws. It's a lot harder to do this while you're filming yourself, so it should be easier for you. <laughs> and I may fast forward some of these parts if they're too long. Don't scratch your guitar with the screwdriver. Be very careful, of course. One more, this is number four, and then this thing will fall through. Take that frame off the top of the guitar. It's like a rubber frame. Keep that safe. And then the preamp comes straight through and comes out the sound hole. Now, we're going to disconnect the two wires. Again, we're going to reuse those wires. So the one closest to you is the pickup. It's silver, and the other one is the battery. Uh, it says input and output, and that's it. Pretty light, too, actually, for what it looks like. Also, we'll take the battery out of there as well. I'm going to reuse that battery. So, there we have the old system. And we have a sound port in the guitar, the top of the guitar here. If you want, you can put the strings back on and see how this sounds. It probably sounds pretty good <laughs> with a big hole in the top of the guitar. But it doesn't look so nice, so I can't wait to put it back together again. Now, before I put the new controls in, I'm going to stick the mic inside. So I'm going to get the new system here. So there's the new system, and it has, again, the frame and the preamp. So I'll reuse those. This time it has three controls on the back, because you've also got the mic to go in there as well. And it says input one, two, and output. But it doesn't say which one is the mic and which one is the pickup, but I'll let you know. And then... We just we need the microphone part now. So I'm going to take the microphone out of here. Looks like this. And that's all it is. So what you're going to do with this is you're going to stick it inside. So the wire is coming up towards you. And you're going to stick it right under where the saddle is here. Okay? As straight as you can. And then the wires already kind of wrapped together. So you just need to add this to the wires. Because this is going to run into your pickup. So you just need to include this in those wires and make sure it's not rattling around. Okay, that's why I said this is quite an easy installation. So you're going to put it in like this, underneath like this, basically. Or obviously this way around. So it'll be sticking in like that, okay? under, Going straight down under the saddle. And there's two um, sticky pads here to do that. So I am going to put two of these pins back in, the two outer ones. And I'm going to use these to guide myself inside. I'm going to use these to guide myself. Take my watch off. I put the two E pins back in. Now, if I put my hand in the guitar, I can feel those two pins, okay? So I now know where I'm going to stick this. Remember, straight under the saddle, and I want the wire coming up towards me like that. Obviously, this way around, it's going to stick to the top like this. So that's how it's going to work, like that. And if you mess it up, if you want to try something else, you can always get more of these sticky pads and redo it. I'm going to take off the sticky pad, and you want to hold it there for a while as well so it sticks. I'm going to feel where those two pins are. 
You could use a mirror, might be even better. And I'm going to stick it as straight as I can right under the saddle. I got it. <laughs> and I'm going to hold it there until it's stuck. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's right in front of those two pins. It's right there. It's good. And remember, if it goes wrong, you can pull it off, but you need to get some more adhesive pads and our bags or make your own and stick it again. But it's pretty forgiving. I've had one of these fall out of a guitar before. It still sounded pretty good, even though it was like dangling in the guitar. So you could use a mirror or camera, like I said, but just be as, as, as close as you can. I've never had a problem with how I've done it. Right, so now we have this cable here. So what we have to do is make sure this is attached to the others. The other cables are already locked inside with the clips clipped inside. So I'm just going to put that into that same clip, basically, just so it's not rattling around. If you look in the guitar, just look inside, you'll see where the clip is already. And you can just pull it out and you can just add this to that clip. All right, there's, I think there's two in this one. So I, I can, there's one at the back here. Put it in there and secure it again. And then there's one at the front, which is really easy to see. You just kind of flip it back and then add it to that clip. Stick it in there and then pull down, back down on it again, and then it's going to be stuck in there. So that's good. Now you're going to have the two cables we pulled out earlier, plus the new one. So you could grab those three and just give it a little bit of a shake. Yep, there's no noise, so we're good. Okay, you have to feed the control module through the bottom of the guitar like this, okay? And then plug it in from the bottom. So I'm going to do this this way around. The big right angle cable goes into the biggest hole. The silver pickup cable goes into number one. And our new microphone cable, which is the black cable, goes into number two. You have to do it this way around or you can't feed it through from the top, unfortunately. So you put those wires in, as I just said. There we go. Make sure they're secure. And then feed that through the hole again with the controls coming out the top. Now get your hand so you can feed it back through the hole. So your controls are coming through. And you can see them. So the, the holes line up with the holes in the controls here at the top. You'll see when you're looking down on it. And then you're going to get your rubber ring here again and put it over the top like that. You need to line it up and you need to make sure you're pushing pressure on it so it stays in position. You don't want any gaps or unevenness, okay? You might have to play with this a little bit. But basically, line up the holes, line up the rubber part on the top, line it all up and hold it together. And then you're going to put the screws back in again. And then you're basically done once you put a new battery in here, or the old battery even. So then put a screw in the top. Make sure there's no dust and make sure it's as straight as you can be. You might have to play with this a little bit. Sometimes I've had to redo this because it wasn't quite lining up correctly. But that's okay. This is the most fiddly part. This is probably the worst part for me. I want it to be nice and secure and straight. It will be secure. These screws are long. But getting it level in there is a bit fiddly. As you tighten the screws, it will pull up the, the thing tighter together. Okay, one more here at the back. I'll see how this works. I may redo this part myself on mine. Just be really careful you don't scratch the guitar with the screwdriver. And I reused the same screws and the same ring. So all you're doing here is changing the controls and adding the microphone. That last one there is a bit fiddly at the back, but basically that's it. Like I said, getting that in there straight is the hardest part for me. You might, might want to play with that. Then you just push down here, take the battery out and put the battery in from the other one. Unless you want to put a brand new battery in, that's a good idea as well. And one thing inside there, there's a little control in the box. You get this tool and you can use this to adjust the level of the mic. On the top here, you have a mix, which will give you more or less mic blend. But this tool is like a one time setting. Plug it into your PA system that you use and adjust that inside. So you have to remove the battery, make the adjustment and then put the battery, listen and so forth. So I usually do that for a few days and mess with it until I get it just right. You might want to recreate the sound of the guitar acoustically. You might want to have it set a certain way for your personal preference. It's up to you, but that's what that is for. Right now, I'm just going to leave it as stock, stock settings. So the wires are connected. Nothing's loose. 
the controls are here, everything's set flat, volume's on maximum. Everything seems to be working just fine. Tuner's working. So we're good to go. That's basically it. It's really not that hard. The hardest thing is getting this lined up again and nice and straight in the top there and making sure you don't scratch your guitar while you're doing it. So now what you're going to do is you're going to put the strings back in again. This whole thing took about 30 minutes and that was with making the video as well. So put the strings back in, leave that capo where it is. And then we'll try it out. I'm really excited to try this in this guitar because I love the anthem. I love this guitar and I think it's going to be a really nice upgrade. I use that term upgrade lightly because again, you are losing a few features, but you're gaining a microphone in your guitar. Once you've got some pitch there, you can remove the capo and tune the, the guitar. So I hope this guitar, this, I hope this guitar, I hope this video was useful. If it was, please subscribe and ring the bell. I do a lot of talk on acoustic guitars, acoustic guitar pickups, and I'm learning all the time. And I'm happy to share that information with you guys. And if you've got information you want to share, please share it in the comments section as well. So now I've done that, I can remove this capo. Okay, so everything is flat. This is full pickup. Again, let's check the level of the pickup here to see how it sounds. Definitely less output. I'm going to turn up my input gain to compensate. So that should sound the same as before, but we now can blend the microphone. Here's full microphone. And then just experiment with it. I would probably do, I mean, this, this is everything 50-50, 50-50, everything flat basically on the indent for the mic. The bass, the treble, phases out, but volumes on full sounds like this. So I love that sound. Here, here again, I'll go from all pickup to a blend, the 50-50 blend with the mic and the pickup. So first of all, just the pickup. So it just it just adds that realism, just adds that smoothness. So again, one more time, just make sure that everything's tight here. Make sure that there's no rattling. Yep, there's no rattle there at all. And that's it. I now have an anthem in the guitar. So I hope that was useful. I learned a lot doing this, and I wanted to share it with you. So uh, let me know in the comments below if you do this, if it helps you, if you've got any tips for me. If you're new, subscribe and ring the bell. I really would appreciate it. But I mean, this now is the perfect guitar for me. And if you want to learn more about this guitar, check out the review and the videos I've made the last few weeks. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Thanks for watching. Take care and be well. Bye-bye.